All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So this video is the first of a three-part series that I'll be producing about the Martian movie and book. Spoiler warning, the potatoes that Watney grows on the surface of Mars get exposed to Martian conditions, and supposedly it completely kills his garden. Now, I'm gonna actually try to recreate this and see if decompressing and exposing potatoes to a Mars-like conditions for several hours would actually kill them. Look at that, that's a rock. There's a rock inside of the potting soil mix. So what I'm doing here is I'm mixing together some uh, compost uh, potting soil mix, just like this, with some sand. This is to simulate the Martian soil that Watney had on the surface of Mars. Now this isn't a perfect Martian simulant. I mean, if I wanted to do better, I would mix the uh, composted night soil with volcanic ash and meteorite fragments, but you know what? This will be close enough for what I'm testing. And besides, the potatoes are gonna love it. So I get this all mixed together. I'm gonna put it over here in this container. Now I gotta go find some potatoes to plant. Here are my potatoes. You see these are actually the ones that I harvested from my front yard in those flower pots, you know, back in the beginning of summer. And as you can see, they've started to sprout. And so you know what? I may as well use them for this experiment. So let's pick out a couple of them here that are growing nice. See that? And they're actually also the same kind of potato they used in the movie. So there you go. Let's plant these down in there. Now the plan here is to get them growing so some of the potatoes will be growing and having f leaves and all sorts of stuff. But I'm also going to have some potatoes that are just starting to sprout buried underneath the soil as well as some potatoes that have not sprouted yet to kind of test a range of different life cycle stages. So I'm just going to put a few of them down here probably on this half with just the sprouted potatoes, and then I'll wait for these to grow up a little bit before proceeding with the experiment. For my vacuum chamber, I'm actually borrowing my parents' freeze dryer here. And uh, I've just removed the racks so that the potatoes can actually fit. And I've turned on the freezer, and I believe the temperature in there is, yeah, it looks like negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's fairly cold. Not quite as cold as you'd expect from Mars, but really the inside of Watney's habitat would have been quite warm. This is just mostly to help protect my vacuum pump here. This one is significantly more expensive and more powerful. Unfortunately, the freeze dryer does not like having its racks removed and uh, it keeps uh, having an alarm go off and I don't think it's actually going to read the temperature for me. That's why I've got that temperature scale in there. Also, I'm not sure if the pressure gauge is on this or if it's actually inside of this. I guess we're gonna find out. Let's put these guys in the back, right there. And this one up front so we can watch the plants die. <laughs> okay, uh, thermometer, and as well stick it in there. So once I've cleaned this off, I'm gonna turn on this vacuum pump and it'll be just like I threw it off onto the surface of Mars. I've got this light on here to simulate the lights that Watney would have had on these plants, as well as making it so I can see and so this doesn't fog up too much. Okay, so it's starting to snow in there. I better turn on the vacuum pump, assuming it'll actually turn on. There we go. It's vacuuming. Oh, it turned it off. Okay, I'm gonna have to plug in the v pump into the uh, wall. Okay, that's much better. We're starting to pull out all of the air. I can actually see like steam and stuff rising up from the plants. So basically this is simulating that the plants are inside of a barrel on the surface of Mars with a hole in the side of it. <laughs> All right, let's see if they survive. Yeah, the pressure gauge must have been in the racks. So when I took them out, it's no longer eating anything. 
So I think I'm going to be merciful and stop the experiment now after only four hours of running it. Mostly because the vacuum pump is starting to show water in the oil. So also it's starting to sound ragged. So I'm going to change the oil on this actually. And also Watney probably could have saved some of the potatoes about an hour ago. So this is probably a decent test. If it kills them all, I won't be surprised. <laughs> You really should start with things that are completely frozen before it starts vacuuming, otherwise water vapor will go through this hose and into the pump. Once this pressurizes, we'll have a look at those potatoes and see if they, see how they did. Okay, let's open this up. See what we got. Oh, it's cold. And it feels about the same weight. I'll weigh the water that came out of it to figure out how much actually vaporized. Let's get this other one out of there. Yeah, there's, there's not that much water here. And I'm not going to let the dirt go down that uh, vent hose. I'm going to tip this thing forward and catch the water out the front. See, it will be muddy. So measuring the temperature of this with the infrared thermometer, looks like it's about freezing. This one about the same. I have to say this dirt is, it feels very dry. It's also just frozen. But it is wet underneath just a little ways down. So it didn't like dry out the whole thing. Let's uh, dig this down a little bit and see what the temperature is down inside. <laughs> it's even colder. Look at that, negative 22. Yeah, it's absolutely freezing down in there. My guess is then, these potatoes are toast. See how these leaves fared? You know what? Now that it's had a little time to warm up, it's actually still pliable. It didn't freeze dry it. I'm actually surprised, considering how thin this is, it should have done very quickly. Well, it didn't really have a source of heat, did it? So it just froze and stayed froze. I mean, I had the light coming in, but it wasn't super bright. They didn't completely dry out. They'll just droop and be exactly like I just froze them. They're dead. It's now completely thawed out, and I've captured all of the water in this pan here. Let's transfer it over to this beaker and see just how much there is. There we go. Looks like just over 150 milliliters. Yeah, 175 milliliters of water vaporized off those pots. Well, it's been a couple of days, but I need my time-lapse camera for something else. And uh, I haven't seen anything on the surface, so why don't we break this open, dig it apart, and see if there's any growth uh, down inside the dirt. If not, I'm pretty sure they're dead. Let's start with the potato seeds and see what we got in here. Now, first of all, I'd like to point out that the soil is still moist. It was pretty dry at the surface, but down in here is just as moist as it was back when I put it into the uh, freeze dryer. So let's shovel away the rest of this. Yeah, the potatoes are all squishy. That pretty much tells me that they are indeed dead. I don't see any sort of growth coming on. Yeah, that's very well killed. You know, potatoes are pretty hardy, but only because they're buried in the soil. But if the soil gets down to negative 22 degrees, yeah, they're dead. In fact, I can tell that this uh, seed potato isn't gonna come back because it's all squishy. That means that the uh, cellular damage from the freezing has you know, ruptured all the cells and now the cell membranes are not stiff anymore. The fluids have been leaked out. If you were really good at plant biology, you might be able to salvage some cells from this and basically clone the potato from it, but it'd be a lot of work and I don't think Watney had the equipment to do it. So I'm definitely giving that this test here killed the potatoes. But something's been nagging at me and that's the fact that the habitat 
would have been insulated from the cold. I don't think it would have gotten that cold. It wouldn't be like the walls of the container would be freezing. They'd be at normal room temperature still. It would take a long time for it to get down to Martian temperature, and even if it did, I'd assume that the hab would actually have heaters which would keep it warm. So I need to simulate that before I call this. So here's the water out of the pump. As you can see, there's some droplets in the bottom and it's very cloudy due to suspended water. So that's not very good for it. So I've done a few things differently for this next run. Having liquid water in there made far too much water vapor come up. And since I'm doing this run with the chamber warm, I'm not even going to have it attracting to the sides of the container. So to help mitigate that, I've added in some desiccant here in this tray and also inside of a little scrubber on the end of that hose. So I think the first thing I want to try is actually putting a, my last potato plant in here. And I'm actually going to take it down to a low pressure very briefly just to see if it can survive the low pressure. So I just wrapped the desiccant in some paper to keep it clean. Let's add in this altimeter watch just to see what it does. You can also read the time off there. But uh, I've also built a little pressure gauge put on the side here. You can actually read off the pressure rather accurately. Okay, let's turn on the pump and see how it does. See, the altitude is increasing because the pressure is dropping. <clears throat> How high is Everest? Is it 29,000? It might be that one. Whatever. And there we go. The altimeter just can't handle it. But this thing over here should be able to. So this is a little barometer, it's short, so it can only measure very low pressures. This over here is graduated in millimeters, so I can measure something like 30 millimeters of mercury or something, whatever. <laughs> millimeters of mercury, of course, is torr. There we go, starting to drop. Very slowly. Let's see what this potato plant's doing. The pressure gauge seems to have stopped falling at around 10 millimeters of mercury. This tells me that the vapor pressure of the water inside the pot is roughly equivalent to 10 torr, and it's actually holding the chamber at that pressure. It's probably a decent enough test. Let's let the pressure off now. And we're back. Let's see if those potatoes made it through it. Let's open it up. They look decent enough, but I'll wait till tomorrow morning and see if they're still alive. Looks like the desiccant did its job. It's a little bit pink. Perfect. Now for the real test. I'm going to be putting some potatoes down in this little pot and then covering them up with soil. And now, so we can see what temperature it is, I'm going to stick a little thermometer down in here, just like this. And the, the long edge of that thermometer will pull heat out of the inside of the pot so we can measure it. The atmosphere out here isn't going to really conduct much heat to it because there's not going to be much of an atmosphere. So here's my setup. You can see my mercury gauge. I put a clock in there so you can see what time it is and how long has elapsed on the time lapse. Hopefully the liquid crystal display in that will hold up. I, I'm pretty sure it will. I got a thermometer here for measuring the outside temperature and what the chamber is. And then of course a little tiny thermometer in there to measure the temperature of the inside of the pot. Hopefully we'll be able to read that on the time lapse. But if not, I can certainly read it from here. Okay, let's turn on the vacuum pump and hope too much water doesn't go into it. Well, here we are, almost two hours in. Looks like our pressure is stabilizing at right about five millimeters of mercury, which corresponds to about the same pressure as you would have on the surface of Mars. So that's cool. 
Let's see what our temperature is in there. Looks like we're hovering right about zero C. Or, more accurately, the triple point of water. Which makes sense, because the triple point of water is about four torr, and until that pot completely freezes solid, that pressure will not drop, because the water will continue to vaporize, making up the difference. The liquid crystal on the watch seems to have handled it just fine. Which makes sense, because the watch is rather well sealed. And the vapor pressure of the liquid, if it really even is liquid, is probably much lower than the pressure that was inside the chamber. Look at that. We seem to be just above the freezing point. And that's after two hours. So perhaps if Watney could have saved his potato plants, perhaps in one of the pop tents, you know, within two hours, he might have been able to save the potatoes. But, of course, we're going to have to see if these actually grow before we say anything. Yeah. It's a little colder in there, but it's not freezing. So, as long as the potatoes were okay with the vacuum, I'd say they're good. You can see my desiccant here. The cobalt chloride indicator is pink over here, but not quite over here. So, it looks like no water went into the pump. Yeah, you can see the desiccant got quite warm as it absorbed all that water. However, you can see that the soil is far from being dry. In fact, it's quite wet. This potato plant seems to be doing decently well after it's two minutes into the chamber. But let's see how these ones do. I'm actually going to take these and uh, dig them up a little bit, bring them up nearer to the surface so I can watch on them more closely. And there's the other. They feel cold, but they're definitely not frozen. This is probably what Watney would have done. Aha! Look at this! It's got roots! That potato plant is very much alive. I think this one's growing even a little bit. Yeah? So two hours in the vacuum chamber at Martian pressures did not kill them. How about that? <laughs> Uh, this plant is doing very good by the looks of it. So a couple of minutes didn't kill the adult plant either. Oh man, that is cool. Now I know a lot of people will mention that the atmosphere was not CO2 like it would be on Mars, but really if it was inside of an enclosed container, the atmosphere wouldn't be CO2 inside of it either. It'd be mostly water vapor, which is what I was simulated. So there you have it. A depressurization event in your Martian habitat probably isn't going to kill all your potatoes, at least not right away. After he'd fixed his helmet, Watney may have been able to go and rescue some of the potato plants. Perhaps on the far side of the hab or inside one of the pop tents, the potatoes probably would have survived for at least several hours. I'll definitely keep this in mind if I'm ever on Mars and have a similar situation happen. But for the story, of course, it was far more interesting to have him lose his garden and then have to travel halfway around the planet to the other landing site. So, hope you all enjoyed, I'll see you next time.